Get the real news at realrawnews.com. Article dated August 15th, 2023, entitled Joint U.S. Special Forces and Spetsnaz Team Rescues 73 Children in Ukraine. A joint U.S. Special Forces and Russian Spetsnaz infiltration unit has rescued 73 children from a horrific dungeon in Ukraine and slaughtered a score of abductors who had been draining the kids of adrenal fluid with plans to market them as child sex slaves afterwards, a source in General Eric M. Smith's office told Real Raw News. The operation, which occurred last Thursday, August 10th, marks the first time Vladimir Putin's elite forces and America's intrepid special operations community have cooperated in a mutual venture aimed at eradicating the adrenochrome trade and ending the proliferation of pedophilia in a country whose president, the demon Vladimir Zelensky, reportedly keeps a harem of drugged kids at his Kiev estate. Our source, General Smith, said last Tuesday, August 8th, received a personal telephone call from Russian Defense Minister Sergei Shoigu, who claimed to have intelligence that people working for the pig Zelensky were holding young boys and girls, including American citizens, in a decrepit laboratory somewhere near Nahakiv, a village in Lviv Oblast about five miles east of the Polish border. Shoigu said his forces had yet to learn the lab's precise location but were zeroing in. He told General Smith that he would send Spetsnaz to save the children and kill their captors once he had geographical coordinates. He then made an overture of collaboration, asking whether the general wanted his forces to join the mission, as American children were among the hostages. General Smith, our source said, pressed Shoigu for specifics and the source of his intelligence. We have our methods of extracting intelligence, Comrade General Smith. Perhaps we are less concerned about violating the human rights of criminals than you are. You can join us if you can get there fast enough, or we can send your children home, Shoigu said through his human translator. The general, our source added, was naturally suspicious, but receptive to Shoigu's offer. He always, he's always on guard for traps, he said, but he knows that over 400,000 kids What they used to call milk carton kids are missing and presumed to be commodities in the pedophile and adrenochrome rings. He gave it a moment of thought and he said he wanted in. Shoigu gave him instructions on where to cross the border from Poland into Ukraine to meet the Spetsnaz team, our source said. One thing, Comrade General Smith, you should know is we do not take prisoners, Shoigu said. Immediately following the call, General Smith contacted 5th Special Forces Group Commander Colonel Brent Lindemann at Fort Bragg, telling him to get a platoon suited up for a holiday. His way of saying a firefight was on the horizon. He told Lindemann to pick at least two men who spoke Russian. Redundancy should one fall in battle. Special Forces crossed into Ukraine from Poland on foot the morning of Thursday, August 10th and, after meeting their Spetsnaz contact, hiked five miles to a makeshift camp where two dozen Spetsnaz were either sipping coffee from thermos mugs or unpacking and repacking rucksacks, removing unneeded gear. The team leaders, our source said, shook hands and got along swimmingly. The Spetsnaz leader had good news. He had located where the children were being held, a fenced compound with three structures, the ad hoc prison and two guardhouses, four miles southeast of their current location. He said his scouts already had eyes on the target and counted eight perimeter sentries, possibly more lurking indoors. The lead Spetsnaz opined that the sentries ambled about like hired goons, not trained soldiers, and suggested that special forces tackle the guard shacks while his men assault the ramshackle textile mill that Zelensky had converted into an adrenochrome siphoning plant. Once they suck the children dry like vampires, they feed them, make them look healthy, even put makeup on the very young girls and bring them across the border to sell, the Spetsnaz said. They ingressed after dusk, U.S. snipers plunking down sentries with headshots, 
while Spetsnaz snipped a hole in the rusted fence surrounding the buildings. Four sentries fell before the others realized they were under attack. Someone was screaming in Ukrainian to get the children, kill the children, but was suddenly silenced when Spetsnaz grabbed him from behind and slit his throat. As guards emerged two by two from a cement shack, special forces now moving forward and covering one another took them down, ensuring none reached the mill, where a Spetsnaz was prying open the door lock. The shrieks of screaming children pressed against the wall with an almost tangible force. You are safe. We are here to help, a Spetsnaz said in English and in Russian. Please keep your voices down. I know you are frightened. Special forces eliminated the last three guards, and a head count of the children began. 41 American and 32 Russian kids were handcuffed to shackled bolts to the walls. Although many appeared nourished and generally healthy, others showed signs of anemia, dehydration, and starvation, as if the jailers were biased against certain children. You see, this is what they do here every day, a Spetsnaz told Special Forces. According to our source, Spetsnaz summoned a QRF on standby, which came with vehicles to extract the children to a safe house for medical care, after which they would be identified and sent home. We asked our source if the mission marks an era of cooperation between Russian and American White Hat forces. Quote, we share similar goals, he said, adding that the special forces would remain in theater until further notice. There's a lot of missing kids, and only God knows how many are in Zelensky's backyard, he said. 